should simultaneously be endowed with such a rich portion of social, spiritual, and emotional maturity. And you continue to partake of the benefits of your superior intellect and natural for sound judgment while enjoying this last year of the fourth decade of your earthly sojourn. <laughs> With exceeding great fondness, Richard G. Hinckley, Rossi e. Kendall, Gordon R. Jensen, Dash, under protest. <laughs> Thank you, Bishop Jensen. <laughs> Next phase of the service, um, church service again, of course, that's in quotes as usual. Uh, was a uh, release from this bishopric and a call to the state prison, seeing again the problem of his uh, absentee uh, participation was quickly noticed, and uh, uh, I think we ended up with a couple of items out of sequence, so let's leave right here for the moment. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see a typical state presidency meeting in the direction of President West. Very quickly, President West, as he'd attend our meetings, the sacrament meetings, he would see the dummy and he, he said, uh, I think I'm going to need that, and of course he did. <laughs> we'll certainly make no particular comment that President Horn is asleep in the photo. But, but were we to try to divert attention from our, our dummy on the left, we, uh, we would make some comment about that. But accompanying that dummy, quite frankly, uh, it came in anonymously, and uh, uh, President Horn saw the letter, it was addressed, and President Horn, we have asked uh, him uh, to read that letter, if he would, and uh, help you understand the concerns that some of the people had. Dear President West, the dummy which accommodates this, uh, this letter is respectfully given to you by state members embarrassed on your behalf by the frequently vacant chairs and the stake offices which were acquired at great personal sacrifices of state members and reserved for a present functioning first counselor. Dick was the first counselor, let's just make that clear. <laughs> the absences have led most to assume that you had been serving all these years with but one counselor, which was true. As a careful, as a careful and objective, I, I didn't mean to take more liberty here than I should have. Is it all right? Well, that's quite all right. I think you need to clarify from time to time because folks who wrote that were really quite angry, but still trying to be charming. As a careful and objective analysis reveals, using a dummy as a substitute for your first counselor in absentia. F-C-I-A, First Counselor in Absentia. <laughs> two, two dummy sides. Uh, clearly duplicates the real stature of the F-C-I-A, First Counselor in Absentia. Three dummy shapes, see number two above. Four dummy inflation. Gaseous substance used to inflate the dummy was carefully selected so as to duplicate as close as possible the hot air that normally emanates <laughs> from the FCIA on his occasional visits to his assigned duties and location. Five, hat, expressing true loyalties of the FCIA. Six, hair, head, in parentheses, obviously tinted and overgrown. <laughs> Seven, hair, chest. <laughs> Who could not grow hair on his chest if he spent as much time at rest and relaxation as the S.I.A.? <laughs> Eight, smile. Who would not smile with the work and church schedule enjoyed by the S.I.A.? <laughs> Nine, hands. Only thumbs are present, which clearly represents the F.C.I.A.'s level of proficiency in doing anything useful. <laughs> Ten, tennis attire, carefully mismatched and ill-fitting, reflects where he generally is during church meetings, as well as where he would like to be during the meetings he attends. Love and a callous, free knees. <laughs> Let me read that one more time. Callous, free knees. The blemish-free knees uh, reflect how little, if any, time he has spent seeking help from above. <laughs> Obvious contrast with the FCIAR. Are you awake, Dick? <laughs> I realize we're well into an hour of this meeting. <laughs> okay. One. Eyes. Uh, contrast now. Eyes. Open and alert. In stark contrast to the closed or glazed eyes of the FCIA. Two. Food consumption and state functions. 
On a scale of 1 to 10, the food consumption of the dummy will be zero, while the FCIA has, has clearly earned a rating of 10 times 10. <laughs> uh, three, intelligence. Dummy silence will give no clues, in contrast with the pointless remarks made by the <laughs> For warmth and feeding, better left unsaid lest you feel that this letter has been written by someone who bears a grudge against the FCIA. <laughs> Five, meeting attendance. If you wish, the dummy will maintain 100% its attendance record. This is in contrast to the FCIA's dropping by on occasion to offer a lame excuse for having missed or been late to yet another meeting and or to be boastfully announce his re or to boastfully announce his reasons for the next series of absences. <laughs> Six, meeting participation. More good will come from the dummy silence than the limited participation from the FCIA. <laughs> Eight, the FCIA, as President Emeritus of the Senior Citizen Society of America, could hardly appear as youthful and full of life as the dummy. Eight, tennis shorts. No pair of tennis shorts have ever been fabricated that would require a pin in the waistband to adjust the girth of said FCIA. <laughs> Uh, parenthetical note, it should be noted that an alternative spelling of the word waistband could have been waist, W-A-S-T-E-N, <laughs> so as to more accurately describe the undue accumulations found in this part of the anatomy of the FCIA. Ah, last, it is sincerely hoped that you will derive comfort and companionship from your new dummy. It is suggested that you not take it with you to the upcoming state conference, since having even an inert object occupied the otherwise vacant seat at your right would seriously detract from the meeting. Should you have occasion to see the FCIA, please extend to him our sincere love and best wishes. If you should see any members of his immediate family, please extend to them our or please extend to them our sympathy. <laughs> Respectfully <laughs> respect yours, C dot M dot O dot T dot S dot L dot E dot S dot concerned members of the Salt Lake Immigration State. <laughs> <laughs> Because of his fondness for for our honor honor tonight, President West would only part with that letter, so we might share it uh, after after the great protest. <laughs> now here we have the aforementioned typical uh, state presidency meeting. <laughs> the day President West uh, enjoying a, a little companionship there. <laughs> Uh, the date being, uh, this, this is a documented uh, March 19th, 1989. Again, this is an official por <laughs> portrait of the state presidency under President of the administration. <laughs> <laughs> this, is a, this is a photo taken of, uh, of Dick Hinckley at uh, 7 o'clock in the morning after his early morning wake-up call from Brother Richard Scott <laughs> on uh, Sunday morning, of course. He's, he'll, he'll be there most any time now. The meetings began at 6. <laughs> we tried to give him an extra hour, I'm told, uh, to see if he'd show up on his own, but it didn't really work. <laughs> when he did finally get there, of course, he forgot to come a <laughs> You know, in any form, he was really appreciated. <laughs> now this photograph is the immigration state equivalent of a photograph of Big Bigfoot <laughs> or of the Loch Neck Loch Neck monster. It seems that President Hinckley did indeed attend a, uh, a meeting with uh, a humble bishop of one of the wards in the state, <laughs> and he actually showed up for that preparation and planning meeting and. Uh, and it was deemed appropriate for the occasion before he flitted away to take a photograph, and you can see how happy he was to be.